Are you following the starch solution or a low calorie density way of eating and you're still having trouble losing or maintaining your weight? Then stick around because I have three easy whole food plant-based recipes that are perfect for maximum weight loss. Hi, Debbie Chu here from Chew on Vegan and welcome back to my kitchen. If you're new here, I'm a plant-based RN and I follow the starch solution. The Starch Solution is a program that was developed by Dr. John McDougall, and following his way of eating, I was able to lose those last 15 pounds. If you would like more information on the Starch Solution, I will leave a link to his book in the description box below. On my channel, you will find quick and easy whole food plant-based recipes. So if that sounds good to you, please subscribe, and make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a video, which is every Tuesday and Saturday. Also, make sure you follow me on Instagram, at ChewOnVegan. And if you're new to this way of eating, or have been doing it a while, but feel like you need some more support, I started a Facebook group, and there you will find recipes, inspiration, and most importantly, support. So in today's video, I will be showing you three very, very simple meals that you can have for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I don't particularly eat breakfast foods at breakfast. Um, I do eat a lot of oatmeal, but I usually don't have my first meal till about noon. So at most people's lunchtime, I'm eating oatmeal. So you can interchange it for whatever meal that you want to use it for. And on a side note, for those of you of a certain age, who does not love a three quarter inch sleeve? It's just so nice to cover up your little bat wings, your crepey skin. So I'll leave a link to these shirts in the description box below. I have probably four of them, different colors. That was just a side note because I have gotten some questions on where I get my shirts. So I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. Anyway, I got sidetracked. So back to the recipes. Uh, as I said, these are going to be simple and easy. So let's get started. First up, I'm going to make some Southwest hash browns. Uh, I have made different variations of this, and uh, this one, this is one more little variation. And so what I like to do is, uh, well, let me show you the ingredients. I've got this um, Ultimate Southwest blend, and this has um, corn, it's got black beans, it's got some poblano chilies, which are not hot, red peppers, and some roasted onions. And I've also got... Trader Joe's fire roasted bell peppers and onions. Trader Joe's hash browns, just potatoes in here, which are perfect. They were out of the frozen riced cauliflower, so I just got the fresh. And what I did was, is I just put it in my little steamer. I steamed it for about six minutes, and I'm just gonna freeze it. You know, kind of fluff it, put it in a bag and freeze it. And I'm gonna use some of this in the hash browns today. I'm also gonna throw in some baby spinach. I love to throw in greens wherever I can. So you throw some potatoes in here, the hash browns, you break them up a bit. I don't really measure anything here, um, just because I just, I'm, it's different every time I make it. Sometimes I want more potatoes than veggies, sometimes I want more veggies than potatoes. So. Just play it by ear. Usually I like more veggies than potatoes, but I'm gonna say that was about, I don't know, half a cup. You know, it was probably a couple cups of potatoes, about a half a cup of the veggies and then the riced cauliflower. I have a half a teaspoon each of onion powder, garlic powder, cumin, and smoked paprika. I'm not putting any salt in this recipe as of yet. I will salt at the end. And of course, you can change the spices however you would like. Um, just make it your own. This is just a guideline. And let's get this over to the stove and I'll show you how you cook these up. Now the secret to making these hash browns without any oil, which I do not cook with oil, is you need a really good nonstick pan. If you don't have one, you could put it in your 
waffle iron, or if you have a panini press or a George Foreman grill, that works great too. But I'm using my always pan here, which I absolutely love. And you wanna get it fairly hot before you put anything in. That way it gets like a nice little sear, gets a crisp bottom, and then you're not going to touch it for a few minutes. This is how I test to see if the pan's hot enough. Just a couple drops of water. See how they bounce? This pan is ready. And we wanna make sure all that water got absorbed in. And this is on a medium high heat. Then we're just gonna throw it all in. Get it into a nice even single layer. Pat it down a little bit. Then you're gonna put the lid on and you're gonna just leave it. Okay, this is gonna go for a minimum of five minutes and then I'll check it. All right, it's been five minutes, let's take a peek. So what you wanna look for, is there browning on the edge? Yes. Now, I'm not gonna try to flip this all in one piece. I don't have great success with that but I just want the underside to be nice and crispy. So what I do is I kind of do it in sections. And you can see, nice, brown. If you want to try to flip it, then you go right ahead. But, yeah, and this one's almost a little bit too much, but that's okay, I like it like that. And then again, get a nice little flat surface here and then I'm just gonna add my spinach in it's about a cup of baby spinach and then at the very end we're gonna let this go for another um, three minutes or so and then I'm just gonna stir it all together and then the spinach will wilt all right it's been about three minutes also want to mention if you feel like you need to turn it down a little bit, it's getting a little bit too brown for you, then go ahead and do that and just cook a little longer. So now I'm going to mix this all up. And to me, this is perfect. Because I like to have some crispy and then some nice soft potatoes there too. So we're gonna plate this up and I like to add a little barbecue sauce. And I like using the Date Lady barbecue sauce it's no sugar, it's sweetened with dates, there's no oil, and I just think it's really good alternative to regular barbecue sauce. And this is one serving. This will be all for me, and I will eat this no problem. And now, if you feel like this is too much for you, you wouldn't eat this much, you eat what you need to eat to feel comfortably full. It's gonna be different for everyone. I can eat a lot. I've always been able to eat a lot. So for me, this is a normal portion. But you do what's best for you, what works for you. So another one of my favorite weight loss meals is to take a pre-baked Japanese sweet potato, which if you haven't had a Japanese sweet potato, you have to. These are so much better than those orange yams or whatever. These are delicious. So I'm just gonna cut this. Skin and all. And I just love to bake up a bunch of these every week. And then I just throw them in my lunch bag, take them to work. They're great for snacks. This has got a little icky part. We'll just get rid of that. And then I'm just going to very simply season these up. We got a little garlic, a little onion powder, and then just a little pepper. Okay. Now I'm just gonna put this into my air fryer basket. I'm gonna put these on one side. I'm 
Then I'm going to take half of a block of extra firm tofu and we'll save the other half for another recipe for another time. Now I press this for about 10 minutes in my tofu press. And we're just gonna cube it up. And then same thing, a little onion powder, a little garlic powder, a little pepper, and then just a little bit of salt. And I'm gonna do the other side as well. Okay, now this is gonna go on the other side, across from the sweet potato. And then this is just gonna get air fried for, you know, like 10 to 12 minutes at about 400, just check it. And then I'll show you what I'm gonna do with it next. And you just wanna make sure that tofu is not touching each other. So, so it gets, the air circulates all around, and gets it nice and crispy. Okay, so I'm gonna put these in the air fryer and then I'm gonna show you, um, I'm gonna make a quick little salad and then this is gonna go on top. Okay, for the simple salad, I just a couple handfuls of spring mix. You can use whatever kind of greens you would like. And then I'm just gonna put some shredded carrots, cherry tomatoes, and red onion. Again, you can use whatever combo you would like. So just put these on here. I was hoping I had some cucumber, but I did not. And then I'm just using my 3-2-1 dressing. This time I just used the cranberry pear vinegar from the Rocky Mountain Olive Oil Company. This place is great. They have so many different flavors. Check them out. I'll leave their link below. I get no money from this. Uh, I wish I had a discount code, but I don't. Anyway, it's really good. Different flavors really changes up that 3 2, one So you get different flavor profile when you use a different flavor vinegar. I just added a little bit of minced garlic to this one and some oregano, and I will leave the recipe that I made in the description box below. So I've got my salad. Now I'm gonna go get my tofu and my sweet potato, and that's just gonna go on top here. And this took about 12 minutes at 400. If you want it crispier, you can go a little bit longer. And then I'm just gonna pour my dressing over the top. And this is another delicious low calorie meal for maximum weight loss. So another one of my favorite weight loss meals, believe it or not, is a pasta dish. Yes, you can have pasta and still lose weight. It is possible. So this is just a quick little sauce I'm gonna throw together. It's gonna to be a fire roasted sauce. So I'm using a can of crushed fire roasted tomatoes. I just like the flavor profile of roasted tomatoes. You can roast them yourself if you want, but why when you can buy them in a can? And of course, we're gonna have onion. I'm gonna put some mushrooms in there because you know how I feel about mushrooms, all the health benefits of mushrooms. And I'm gonna use up this half a bell pepper. And then I've got about a cup and a half of frozen artichoke hearts that I just, slightly defrosted enough so I could cut them in half. And then I'm also gonna throw in a carrot. I learned this from my grandma. You throw a carrot in the sauce and it helps take away the acidity. It all goes into the carrot and it really does help. And at the end, I'm gonna put in some fresh basil. And then for spices, I have Italian seasoning, of course, onion powder, garlic, granulated garlic, some red pepper flakes, and I'll throw in a little maple syrup too because I love a little sweet and a little spicy sauce. So I'm just gonna chop all this stuff up and then we're gonna head over to the stove. Okay, so I've got a little bit of water in my pan here and I'm gonna throw the onions in. We're gonna saute these for a few minutes. I'm gonna add in some minced garlic. Um, a good teaspoon. And I love to use this minced garlic in a jar. I know fresh is better, 
but this is just so convenient and just makes my life so much easier. So don't feel guilty about using jarred, uh, jarred garlic. It's totally okay. We're gonna saute this until the onions get a little bit soft. You just wanna make sure that the garlic doesn't burn. If you need to add more water, add more water. Now I'm gonna add the mushrooms. And then these will release a ton of moisture too, so. And my, I don't want the pepper in there yet. So we'll just let these cook down a bit. Add in the bell pepper. We're just gonna let this go for a couple minutes. In the meantime, I'm gonna get my water up to a boil and add our pasta. I'm gonna be using bonza rigatoni made from chickpeas. I really like the chickpea and the lentil pastas. You get a lot of protein, a lot of fiber, and we're, this is an eight ounce box, so I'm gonna probably use not quite the whole thing. And this is going to be uh, enough for my husband and myself. All right, we'll add our tomatoes, our artichoke hearts, our carrot, and then spices. Garlic powder, onion powder, Italian seasoning, and some red pepper flakes. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of the maple syrup. About a tablespoon or so. You can, it's to taste. And you don't have to add it at all if you don't want to. Okay, our water's boiling. Boil this pasta for about 10 minutes. We're gonna also bring this to a boil and then we'll let it simmer. And usually by the time the pasta is done, the sauce will be done. And you can, if you want to cook it longer, then you can do that. I mean, I've cooked it 30 minutes to an hour, you know, and of course it will get, develop more flavors. Uh, but, you know, 10, 15 minutes works just great. At this point, I like to add some fresh basil and some Italian parsley. Just let it cook for a couple of minutes. Pasta is just about done. I also like to sprinkle on a little nutritional yeast. So we'll just let this go for a couple more minutes. So I paired it with the side of steamed broccoli, and then I'm just gonna put a little bit more of the parsley and the fresh basil on top. And then I just like to sprinkle a little nutritional yeast on my broccoli. You can put it more on your pasta. And then usually what I end up doing is just mixing it all together. And look at that, 50-50 plate, perfection. So let's give this a taste. So here's the perfect 50-50 plate. Pasta, got tons of veggies in there. What do we have? We have the orange pepper, we have the artichoke hearts, we've got mushrooms, we've got onions, and the fresh basil and Italian parsley. Pair it with the side of veggies. I just steamed up some frozen broccoli, couldn't be easier. And let's give it a taste. Oh, and we use that um, chickpea pasta. This is rigatoni. Mm, so good, full of protein, full of fiber, full of nutrients. So as you learn with all these recipes, they're not complicated, they're easy. You know, you're gonna have some chopping of some veggies, but mostly it's just simple, basic ingredients that are delicious and they're gonna help you lose weight. And if you've already lost the weight, like I have, it helps me maintain my weight. So I hope you give these a try. They're good for you, they're good for the animals, and they're good for the planet. And remember, what you put on your plate determines your fate. Uh, check out all the things in the description box. I put the links in there for um, Dr. McDougall's book, for the Facebook group. Also, the full recipe will be in the description box for you. Also, sign up for my newsletter, and I have an e-guide in there that talks about why a plant-based diet is right for you. So I hope you sign up for that as well. Until next time, thank you. Today I'm going to be showing you some, today I will be showing you three, then stick around because I have three, then stick around because I have three easy, oh my god. At this point I like to, uh,